I'm here with Kevin of MyRath to talk about their upcoming new record, Karma, out March 8th on Ear Music. How's things going with you? Uh, basically quite fine. I'm actually at uh, in south of France in my home with my daughter and my girlfriend. So yeah, everything is working fine. Are you excited about this this record? Like the the days are are approaching quickly. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really really excited, and uh, we needed to delay for for technical purpose. So as a band perspective, it's all it's always a little bit frustrating to to wait for the world to discover what you worked on for many years. So of course we are excited. It's funny that you say that because when I got the album, uh, it had one date, then it changed to another date. And I was so confused because I'm like, okay, so is it coming out on this date, on that date? But the whole thing got sorted out. People are just going to have to wait a little bit longer for this album uh, to get to their hands. But before we talk about the record, let me go back a little bit to last year, to September. You guys played at Proc Power. I was there and you guys were the highlight of the festival. I've, I've never seen... Uh, a crowd that excited throughout the four days that I was there. The place was packed. Everybody was talking about you guys. Everybody was looking forward to you guys closing off the festival. It was great for us, the fans. How was it for you? Um, it was a kind of revenge on life because um, the first attempt to play Pro Power USA, we needed to cancel because we didn't add any money to do it. So it was really, really frustrating because it was an opportunity. Of course, you don't want to lose any opportunity. And two months uh, before the before the festival, we we told Glenn that we couldn't make it because we don't have any money. So it, it was really frustrating. And it's cool that Glenn understood and um, and uh, make it happen a few years later. Um, and what happened is. The first time we played, we were almost opening for the for the festival. The second just before Mike Portnoy, and the third one uh, headlining. So I think it's an awesome progression, and uh, um, I feel honored to 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 have been able to to do this kind of stuff. The the merch lineup for you guys on that day, uh, it was the biggest lineup of the whole festival. I, I, like I said, everybody was talking about you guys. I, I remember the evening as if it was yesterday. We wanted to to listen to you guys play. We myself and my son, we wanted to catch some of your songs, but we were really tired and we had a 5 a.m. flight the next day. So I remember saying to him, "Okay, let's watch two or three songs, and then let's go to the hotel and catch some sleep." We stayed for the whole thing because once we once we heard two or three songs, we're like, you know, we can't leave. Like, we just got to watch the whole thing. Uh, were you shocked with with or surprised with, with the support that the fans gave you guys on that evening? Yeah, of course. And the first thing that surprised me is like 17 minutes after they opened for the merchandising box, the merchandising sales of Miras, uh, the, the, the merch a uh, guy came to me and told me, okay, it's sold out. And I told him, okay, 17 minutes, it's sold out. I should bring more merch next time. But yeah, it, it has been an incredible journey for us. And even if, you know, you take flights and you are tired and it's quite difficult routing when you're on stage in front of this kind of audience, you, you forget everything and uh, everything is great. And I wish we could do more gigs in... Uh, in the USA, um, Camelot, the band, proposed us to tour with them for the tour in US. And we don't have enough money to do it. So it's it's also very frustrating that to come back, we need to pay for visas. Visas are really, really expensive. And um, we are willing to, to tour a lot in the US. But for the moment, we have technical issues uh, because of money. It's a little bit frustrating. Yeah, because that was, actually that was going to be my next question is considering the support that you guys had, when would you guys come back? Because I think from a fan support, from from a ticket sales point of view, I, I think you guys are there. The demand is there. Do you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. But the thing is to find the money to advance everything mm -hmm. and to advance everything for a, a, a tour in the US. I don't know, 10 gigs, whatever. Uh, it could cost more than 10,000 euros. And so you need to advance this money, and this is money we don't have. So we'll, we will try to figure out something.
So let's talk about brighter and happier things. Let's talk about this record. Uh, would you categorize Karma as a concept album, or do you do you see this more as a theme a theme record? Yeah, no, it's not a concept album. I mean, there is a link between the lyrics of the songs, especially because they are told me, uh, Kevin, I, I want to 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 talk about uh, discrimination, racism, and. Uh, Nothing happening on Earth, so there, there is a kind of connection, but definitely um, the the working process, the um, the composing process, has not been done as we could do for a concept album. So it's it's definitely not. Uh, when you look at this record uh, and you see where, what this album offers, what the sound on this record is, and you look back at the previous five albums, how would you define the growth of the band from the beginning all the way to what you see now? Mm, I don't know. I have asked. Uh, I have been asked this question before. What I only can say is that the composing process changed for Karma, uh, and mainly because of COVID. Um, remember when uh, all the border was closing? Uh, Miras was actually touring uh, the Europe, and we were playing in, in a little city in Germany uh, called Leipzig, and they closed everything. I needed to come back twenty-four hours later. Um, in my home and for the Tunisian members it was not possible because um, the Tunisian government didn't bring some flights for their um, Tunisian, Tunisian people so they needed they, they were blocked and they needed to uh, spend six months in my city with me in my in my little house with my wife and my uh, my uh, it was my crowded <laughs> so it was really really difficult because imagine five metalheads uh in a little <laughs> um anyway it's it, it was difficult but we we uh, we took this opportunity to um to compose because generally what is the process um for example i i have an idea i send the idea through uh, gmail to zaire for example i wait for two three days he, he come back with uh, an idea and back and forth digi digitally we exchange it, is, it, it takes a lot of time. This time, I had my piano there in front of me, and I could experiment a lot of stuff. Like, there, could you, could you try this and that? And uh, so it was kind of real time uh, composing. Like all the band that can afford this kind of process do. But for me, Russ, it's not the same thing. So it was the first time we experienced this. So definitely this, has, this album is more natural and straight to the point. Why? Because <clears throat> when you compose alone, it's difficult to render a demo to be big. So you tend to add a lot of arrangement, a lot of stuff. But when you have all the musicians with you, there is a kind of magical thing happening and you need less arrangement, you need, you need less, yeah, work arrangement so everything is more natural and i think it's the definitely the main difference between this album and the previous ones is, is that the reason why i felt like on this record you guys went with less folky elements you guys went with less progressive elements and the album has more of a straight classic heavy metal sound and even power metal sound is that why there is two reasons the the, the first reason is uh, this composing process as i told you and the second reason is because of our um, producer, Jacob, Jacob Hansen, who worked with me on the mix. When I brought the tracks to mix, we had a few tracks, like 80 tracks per song, which is kind of a lot, with a lot of Arabic violins and a uh, lot of uh, hood, mezuid, these kind of typical instruments. He told me, yeah, it's great, but if you... Follow me. I would like to try something. I told him, yeah, why not? And he told me, okay, the, the human brain can't handle... I mean, you have fans which are really happy with the result of, of your album. But in a larger point of view, like not mainstream people, but the most metal heads can't, or most people in general, can't handle so many notes. So you let's try to focus for each part on a, on the top line. It can be the lead singer, 
it can be a melody, a violin melody, it can be a guitar melody, but don't bring too much, don't put too much volume on the arrangement. Let's try to, to do something minimalist to make it easier to mix and easier to understand. So in fact, there is kind of a lot of arrangement on this album, but definitely the volume of the arrangement are a lot lower than for the previous albums. But the size of the sound of this record is still massive. I mean, it feels very cinematic when you're listening to it. It has this larger than life experience. So how did you balance having those less layers there so that you don't have as much uh, volume from that point of view, but still make the songs feel big? The, the, songs, the songs are feeling big because there is less elements. It's, so less it's, is it's, more. Yeah, yeah, less is definitely more. It's It's purely technical. If you let some room for minimalist stuff, you can do more process. You can do more reverbs so you can hear. Because imagine you have a, a song, you put 10 layers of violin, 10 layers of organs, 10 layers of choir, whatever. You put reverb on it, you can't feel the reverb. And reverbs and delay are uh, elements that make your song big. So you have to find um, a compromise between, and we realize that lower, lowering all the elements can bring up the delays and, and reverbs and saturation, and it's the specific technical stuff that can make the, 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 the an album big, yeah. Uh, with all of these changes, did, did that make the production behind this album more challenging, more difficult, or, or did you guys simplify it? Um, basically, it's the same process and it, it's the same nightmare because sometimes you try to mix incompatible elements. Uh, for example, in a, you take a darboka. Okay, it sounds good. You take a, a metal drum. Okay, you, you try to put it all together. It's not sounding because <clears throat> it's not the same equalization range, not the same dynamic, not the same room, not the same everything. So. Each time we, we, we do an album with Miras, it's still changing. And this album took as much as time as the previous one for the mixing. Yeah, so it's exactly the same thing. Well, that's that's su super interesting. Uh, how, how much of the live, because you guys have played a lot of live shows, you know how it is and what the fans expect from you guys live. How much of that plays a role when it comes time to write new songs and putting a new record together, do you think about ahead of time what what these songs have to deliver once you perform them live? We we don't think in a way that we don't intellectualize, intellectualize but we feel it because of course you do I don't know a, a tour in South America as you as we did, and in front of us, I mean when you're on stage you can feel that people are singing some parts and are, are not singing other parts. So um, without intellectualizing, when you try to compose new songs, you try to get this feeling of imagining the people singing the song uh, be, uh, with you, you know? Uh, so of course, um, the more we play live, the more simple will be the arrangement, I think, because as we, as you told, less is more. I mean, if you want to people to to sing your songs, you have to put in front of them one single melody, not four or five melodies playing at the same time. And yeah, the more we we, we are doing albums with with mirrors, the more we create gimmicks. Uh, but once again, we we don't intellectually. It's coming this way. Like we need gimmicks. We need to make people happy. That's it. Uh, of all the different hats that you have with the band, which which one do you prefer? Uh, if if you could just do one thing, which one would you pick? I mean, if I personally wanted to do just one thing in the the band, mm -hmm. uh, playing live. Now maybe composing, that's it. And unfortunately, eighty percent of my life is doing uh, administration, uh, <laughs> visas for the guys dealing uh, stuff doing uh, merchandising and uh, yeah I would like I, I would love 
only to do music. I mean, <laughs> that would be ideal. That would be ideal. Is it hard for you to change the hat when when it comes to, for example, a record like this where you you're creating the 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 keyboard sounds, you're you're adding the orchestrations, you're putting all of these pieces together. And then you have to put the hat of, pro of producer as well to, to work on the record. Is it hard for you to distance yourself from the artist that created the art to the producer that then has to put everything together? Yeah, it's almost impossible. And uh, what I, I need to, to, to be the producer, but it's, it's at the same time almost impossible. So I try, I mean, when I finish the songs, with the band, we try not to compose like, 45 minutes or 50 minutes. We try to compose one hour and a half, two hours of music, like 17 songs, maybe. And what I do is I ask I ask my wife to, 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 to listen to it. I, I ask people, friends, to listen to it. And I trash half of my work. So this way, I'm pretty sure that people decided for me. And when I, I have throw half of my job, I'm focusing on the on on working uh with the, the 10 songs that left on my on my computer and during this process of making listening to people i stopped working i stopped composing so it gives me maybe two or three months to be able to take a little bit of distance on my job you know i, I need to do a break and after i i come back and i i, I work again with this out of producer when you, when you have a vocalist like uh, Zahir uh, how much uh, how, how much does he simplify your job when he has the range that he has when he has the capabilities that he has does he, does he make your life easier as, as a composer as a producer uh, yes and no yes because uh, for me he's, he's an awesome singer and when I propose a vocal line In one second, in, he understands, he adapts, he transforms, and it's ready to go. We can record straight away, one take, finished. So for this part, it's great. For the other part, he is a singer. So a singer means to be late, to forget the rendezvous, to... Uh, Not help with the loading of the trucks and stuff like that, yeah. He's helping. Okay, he's helping. okay. But beside this, is like a nightmare to handle like uh he's not he's he, the funny thing is he's the opposite of the of the rock star means no ego he's carrying more than the guitar player or the drummer or whatever but his way of thinking is out of this world so i can't rely 100 when he's saying okay kevin i'm gonna deliver this it's impossible to have him deliver something on time impossible <laughs> does he know have you have you told him this yeah but it is impossible to change he knows <laughs> he knows but he said it his know, ways he is the kind of guy that called you at 3 a.m in the morning crying because he saw bad stuff about the war I mean, I I'm I I feel um, I feel uh, impacted of all the things happening in the world today. But he's so sensitive. It's maybe this sensibility that um, make him to be unreliable. Uh, I mean, not 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 straight and not um, efficient sometimes when he's doing this because he's he's over sensible. But this over our sensibility allow him to 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 have some creativity for the for, for the song so it's a good and a bad thing i i want to ask this is a tough question to answer but uh some of my favorite songs on this record outside of the singles to the stars temple walls carry on i mean the album has incredible stuff but those three really stood out to me uh when you were putting the album together i know you already did your triage of of, of removing a bunch of songs out But is there any tracks on this record that stand out that you're really excited to see what the experience is going to be live once you perform them? Um, yeah, the the first one is uh, from a from a pianist point of view. Uh, the first one is Into the Light, 
because I mean the the, the piano part on the on the instrumental part is so hard. I don't even know why I composed this because I was unable to play it. It took me maybe two months to to just get it. So it has been a quite a challenge for me because at first when I composed it, I told myself, okay, I will never play this live. We tried and after many months of work, I, I could do so. I'm kind of proud, but it's, it's just, I'm telling you this, this just from a, a pianist and a musician perspective. The second one is uh, Candle's Cry. When I when I composed Candle's Cry, um, I had the idea, a stupid idea of putting guitars together along with uh, claps, like pop claps. And uh, it was not compatible at the beginning. And I tried some stuff and uh, I told myself, okay, there is no clap in metal music. So let's put some claps and let's see what's going on. And we ended with, you will see next month because we will release the official uh, video clip. And uh, the claps, the meaning of the clap is much darker that we can imagine. And there is a connection with the story and the clap and the clapping. And uh, it will be interesting for the for the fans to to discover this. Yeah. One, one last question for you. With, with the album Around the Corner, uh, do you have expectations once the album comes out? Do you have like goals or or things that you hope to achieve with with the release of a new record? Yes, yes. To 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 live, um, to be able to earn money with Miras, to do only Miras, and to work only with Miras, um, because since you are not a one hundred professional musician with your band you need to manage a lot of situation like me to have a, an extra a job uh, there to uh, sing for weddings Anis to do some stuff Malek to do some stuff Morgan to play with four bands and so we need to the, the, the schedules are a nightmare and it will be much more easier to sell a little bit more of albums to be able to uh, yeah, to, to carry on only with uh, with Miras. I I hope your dream comes true. I really hope so because that would be good for me too. Because that then you guys would be able to tour a little bit more and 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 finally be able to do a North American tour because that performance at Prague Power that goes down as one of the best performances of that festival ever. I, I the, the crowd, the excitement, you guys put on an outstanding performance. Uh, I I was I was mesmerized. So. Uh, Thank you very much for you guys gave us on that night. Thank you very much for the record. And thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you very much, man. And, Take uh, care. All I, the best. I, I hope to see you soon. I hope to see you soon as well. Take care. Bye-bye.